Hello everybody, I'm Calumet Repair Winds, and in the video today I'm going to modify this laptop Bluetooth receiver. I took it from an old Samsung netbook, of which you may find a video on the channel depending on the order of things, but the theory is that these are all USB devices, because if you think about it for a moment, it doesn't make sense for companies to design a brand new standard just to connect this to the motherboard when there's already a USB bus, so they don't, they just connect it into the USB bus. Now obviously it has a funny header and a funny little cable, but the theory is I can snip that end off there, solder four wires for a normal USB cable, and then plug it in, and pretty much it's only going to take ten minutes to test the theory, so if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, that's fine. If it does work though, I will, I will have a little USB Bluetooth receiver, and then if I really want, I can 3D print a little case, and we can pretty much save this tiny little USB Bluetooth card from going to waste. You might wonder why I'm bothering, given I can buy one of these online for sort of 5 or £10. Pounds. And the reason why is that the cheap versions of these things that you get on eBay, they have loads of issues with disconnecting and the range is really poor. Um, and they're not that reliable either. I've gone through a few of them in the last year because they just die after a few months. So I'm thinking, I can modify this and I'll have something that's tried and tested, something that's quality, something that's actually going to work. So that's the reason why I'm basically giving this a go. Instead of soldering this to a USB cable and calling it a day, it might actually be easier to just solder a port to it. So let's say I solder a micro USB or a mini USB to it. So with that in mind, I'm going to dig through my box of tricks and see what I can find. So I've got a USB-C port here, but probably not because the pins are really close together. And that's going to be impossible to solder. I could take this micro USB off of an old mouse PCB, so that's a good contender. We'll just put that there. USB-C port here, but this is quite useful because it's a battery charging PCB, so I don't want to use that. An old USB Type-B from a printer, I mean that could possibly work. It's a bit bulky though, just for a Bluetooth card, so maybe not. See, we're almost onto the money here, but these are the sort of, you know, USB Type-A ports, and I would need an A to A cable, which means I'm spending money, which defeats the point. Also, they're too, they're too wide. You know, in a recent video I found a scrap motherboard and desoldered one of these because I couldn't find one, and I looked specifically in this box. <laughs> if I do decide to use just a standard USB Type-A, then I can desolder it from here. In fact, I can even just solder it onto there to test. Ooh, here we go. So, if I look here... I've actually got a micro USB breakout board. Now that's just perfect, because um, the enclosure would maybe be that long, sort of like an old USB drive, but I can take this, solder it there, job done, right? I mean, obviously not because it's not that simple in real life, but yeah, I think this is what I'm going to use. With a bit of effort, I can remove this heat shrink, so if I hold down on here and just pull, you'll notice it is coming off. I want to be careful I don't rip the wires, obviously. Um, I've probably stripped back enough there, to be honest, but I will just keep going and I'll try and just strip it all off. Ah, there we go, look at that. So I've pulled the heat shrink off, and I'm glad I did, because you can see a twisted pair here, and your twisted pair is always your data lines. So a standard USB is ground, data positive, data negative, 5 volt, you know, 4 pins in that order. But this one is clearly ground positive, and then one of the two data lines. Um, so there's no way to know which data line is each, which without just um, basically soldering it together. But you're not going to break it if you just solder it incorrectly. So it's time to strip these back, um, put a bit of solder on them. We'll solder them into this little PCB, and we'll just give it a test. I've stripped back these wires. All I had to do is just put my um, fingernail on and basically pull them apart. Now that I've stripped them back, um, we're just going to put some solder on the four of them. I appreciate you're going to be able to see pretty much squat of what I'm doing, and the way I know that is that I can barely see what I'm doing, and it's here in front of me in the real world. The insulation is melted, but, well, you know, the insulation's being removed, but I wasn't able to do that good a job of it. So I'm just going to sacrifice my desk instead. There we go. I did a bit of testing off camera, and much to my surprise, it turns out that black is 5 volts, and grey is ground. So if I go here, you can hear they're beeping, because I have the multimeter in continuity mode, which pretty much just beeps when you have a connection. So if these two things are connected together, so if I put this at one end of the wire, and I put this pretty much on the little connector, then you get a beep. Um, so yeah, I guess grey is ground, and black is 5 volts. This is completely non-standard. 
I've just put the wire for the ground through the little hole that says GND, you know, ground, and now we're going to solder. Hold on for a moment, I'm gently going to come away. And fingers crossed. That's soldered down into place. And um, we'll then do the um, voltage, which apparently is a black wire, which again, it's just not, <laughs> not how they normally do that. So I'm going to bend the wire, we're going to put it through here. Alright, I'm expecting that's going to ping out of a way, but I'm going to try anyway. This is only carrying a couple milliamps, remember? So it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, although now that's in place, I'm actually going to flip it around and we'll solder it from the other side just so we can be sure. Right, I physically saw the black wire move when I did that, so I know that it's soldered. In theory, the one that's next to ground is data positive, which is red. This obviously doesn't conform to convention, but it'd be really silly if Samsung swapped those two pins because it would just make it more costly for them to manufacture this little thing here. So we're going to solder the red wire next to ground, and the only one that's left is the orange wire, which is going to go to data negative. So red goes to positive, orange goes to negative. The theory is that's soldered up. We're ready to test. So as you can see, none of that says Bluetooth. It's pretty much Ethernet. Um, change the way the screen looks, dark mode or light mode. And then this one is the performance mode. Um, but if I have this, and I'm going to have to set the camera down for just a second to plug it in. Oh, oh my god! So look, we've got, um, we've got that little module and straight away it's come up. Bluetooth, I actually can't believe it. Never. Normally I'll get um, the data the wrong way around or whatever, but that is plugged into the PC. It says Bluetooth, but I'm going to unplug this and straight away that's gone. I'll plug it back in and it's back. I'll unplug it. It's gone. Plug it back in and it's back. That's really, really neat. So these are the ones that I repaired. They're still going strong. I'll click Bluetooth. I'll hit configure. We'll go here. It's going to look for devices, so I'd better hold up on the headphones. ba bum and any second now, fingers crossed, that should find... Oh, there you go, there you go. Bose AE2 Soundlink. da -dum. No way. <laughs> this is actually working. I'm really quite surprised. I've tried to do this a few times with webcams and never had any luck. But these headphones are now connected. Um, not that it gives you any indication. But I'm going to try and play some sound through them and we'll see if it works. My headphones work fine, the range on them isn't quite as good as with the generic Bluetooth adapter, but that's alright because I can still walk around my flat. So, VSB, ground, positive, negative, it's time that we shorten these cables down and we might even work on an enclosure for this little thing. This board in total is 47mm long, and if I measure the other way it's 14 so I'll just bring the ruler up so you can see. 14 millimeters, so I need to make a board that's 47 by 14, and then obviously a pretty little enclosure for it all to go in.
version one ended up not quite fitting so I made a second version. If you take a look here, you can see there isn't enough room for the board to squeeze down and also even if there was, the hole for the micro USB port is slightly too small. So I made myself a second version where I've made the micro USB port hole bigger and I've widened the gap slightly that the micro USB board sits in. So all I need to do is take this out of here, click it into there and it should be job done. It took a bit of effort but I've managed to get the board squeezed in so all I need to do now is put the lid on and as you can see it actually fits pretty well at least and I can get it to line up. So it requires a bit of a squeeze at the back but that's fine because I'm going to super glue it all down and I'm sure super glue has enough strength to hold this thing closed. This model could have been improved on slightly but in the end I got a bit impatient and ended up squeezing it full of super glue. I've put four clamps on which you'll have seen cameoing in other videos possibly and it's going to stay clamped shut. It's currently 16 minutes past 10. It's probably going to stay clamped shut till sort of 9am tomorrow. That's plenty of time for the glue to dry. I'll be able to remove this and we will have a fully working product. There we are then. What do you think about that? I'm really, really happy with it. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's the sleekest thing in the world and that you could sell it to somebody. But, I mean, for my uses, it's going to be absolutely perfect. It's as compact as it can be. I mean, if I bring a ruler up and put it next to it, you can see that it's not even 5 centimeters long, it's just shy. Um, so, in other words, just imagine it's a pretty much just a USB drive. You could put this in your pocket, you could transport it about with you. If you were going to do that, you would obviously use a much shorter USB cable than that thing there. But, either way, I'm going to get this thing, and I'm pretty much just going to stick it underneath the desk like that. Obviously, it's going to be all the way over here, out of the way, and... I'll do, you know, I'll do something like that with it, I'll 3D print a bracket that goes round it. But to be able to reuse a 17 year old Bluetooth card and a micro USB breakout board I've had for god knows how long, um, and then turn it into something that's genuinely really useful, it didn't take much effort, um, and I got to utilise my 3D printer, I'm honestly really, really happy with it. I've even decided to 3D print a little holder for this thing, I had something similar so it only took a few minutes to adapt it. That's obviously printed out, I'm not going to show you me screwing it to the bottom of the desk, but yeah. I can't show you the Bluetooth module in use because it's already been screwed down beneath the desk using that thing I just showed in the last clip. But I've got to say, I've been using it for a couple of days since filming, it's worked absolutely flawlessly. I've been able to walk around my flat and do whatever. Um, I've used it for a number of hours and then basically put my hand on it and it's still stone cold, so clearly those things don't get very hot. Um, I don't know how good the range is, but I can use it um, if I'm just walking around the flat doing things, so I mean it's, it's fine for me. Um, and remember that this is a 17 year old module, there's just there's no other use anywhere for it, it's got no value second hand, so it's great to be able to find another use for it, and really nice to be able to use that junk little micro USB board that I had. Um, either way though, that's, that's all I've got time for today, I do hope you found the thing useful, um, if you did obviously consider giving it a like, hopefully I can ed edit this down so it doesn't take too long, um, maybe you like the bit about um, 3D printing an enclosure or actually modifying the thing to make it work, I don't know, but as I say if it was useful to you, feel free. Um, if you want to see similar videos and if you want to see where the channel goes, obviously feel free to hit the subscribe button, um, it's completely free, you can always change your mind if you don't, if you don't want to see these videos going forwards. Um, but that's all I've got time for today. Um, no promises as to what the next video is going to be. I've got something really interesting um, on the desk. That's where I keep looking away at it. I'm just trying to think through what I'm supposed to do with that PC and how I'm going to make it work. Um, I'm getting distracted. Um, so I guess I'll round up the video here. I'm going to get back to work. But um, I will see you next time. Take care for now and uh, goodbye.